Hey guys, welcome back to your chat. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is our channel, not just mine. So let's get right into it. Today we're doing something different, and we're gonna do funny dog stories. Now I don't know how to post Reddit threads up on my on the um like the side here. I have no clue how. So if someone's willing to teach me, I would love to learn. So let's get right into it. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel. I think this will be more. This will be a lot of fun. Um, doing the story, doing a little story time once a week of animal rescues, funny dogs, funny stories, maybe funny poopy dog stories, funny bath time stories of dogs, um, or animals, any kind of animal. Well, let's get right into it. Also, I have two podcasts. One episode's coming out today, Laughable Moments, and then this here will also, this episode will also be on the Patreon. So go check that out, and I'll chat soon. Okay, guys, let's get right into this. When I was younger, we had a chihuahua that weighed four pounds soaking wet. One day, the family was sitting in the living room watching a movie. We had this couch with recliners on the end where you just touched a button, and the recliner would fling open sister flung open the recliner, the dog just happened to be walking past it, and the dog went flying across the room like a cannonball. It was something, like, out of a cartoon that I'll never forget. That's hilarious. I absolutely love that. Um, yeah, so that is hilarious. I've never seen a dog go flying before because I've always had big dogs, but we have a little one. So I did watch my one dog just fall off the couch and that was hilarious to watch. Okay, on to number two. Okay, story number two. I had this very sweet Burmese Siamese cat. She seemed so elegant and sophisticated to me, but one of her quirks was that she sucked on this one knit blanket I owned and made bread every night when we went to bed. At the time, I thought I was this cool ass, t this cool teenager who had her mattress on the floor of her bedroom, and I kept her cat bed next to it with her blanket in it for her. One night, while dozing off, uh, I noticed that I didn't recognize the feel of her head. I was perturbed, perturbed. I don't know how to say that word, and turned on the bedside lamp that was located on the other side of my bed. To my shock and my disgust. I found that I was scratching her butthole and she didn't give an actual F to what it was that I was doing to her. <laughs> At the time, it wasn't funny to me, but 10 years later, I think it's hilarious. God rest her precious little soul. Aww. That is hilarious. Like, honestly, you don't know what you're petting, so it's just funny how they didn't say how she didn't, re the, the cat didn't react at all. Um, My dog probably wouldn't have reacted either, like. Yeah, you just got to be careful. Probably smelt bad. Just go wash your hands and you'll be fine after. Okay, on to number three. My biggest female cat, 9 to 10 pounds, likes to sit on the side of the full bathtub inside the shower curtain. My littlest tiny female cat, 4 pounds, runs from across the house. The house slides around the corner into the bathroom, shoves the big female into the tub through the shower curtains and takes off like a shot back to the other side of the house. She never knew what hit her. It was hilarious. Um, wait, she went into the tub, takes off. Her. Yeah, it's so funny to see cats, like, freak out. They're curious of what you're doing. You're in the tub, you're, you're having a bath, and then they freak out, like, what are you doing? And then they fall in, and then they freak out because they hate water. It's funny, through the videos I've been um, posting here, I'm actually more shocked by the amount of cats that don't mind water to be honest i've always been told cats don't like water they're scared of water so it's interesting to see that next uh, i'd love to hear your guys' stories if you have a funny animal story i have many um my dog my former dog emo well actually my this is my mom's story more so because she had to deal with it but uh, my old dog emo he um, had a bone stuck out of his butt, and they had to uh, pull it out. He, she had to pull it out with poop still on it, and it, he, he was very satisfied once it was out of there. Okay, next story. The girlfriend and I were sat watching Aliens. Tense moments approaches, the anticipation builds. Scare moments happen. Girlfriend screams she had never seen aliens before. 
and suddenly my sugar glider jumps down from her cage, glides towards my girlfriend's face, it scared the absolute F out of her and caught me off guard too, because I'd forgotten she was out of the cage. It couldn't have been timed any better till her dying day. She was no she was known as the little face hugger, the sugar glider, of course. Oh the girlfriend's crazy. I've never seen aliens before. Wait, the girlfriend I ever watched? Oh, oh, like the show. There's a show called Aliens. I've never seen it either. Uh, that would have made me scream too. I remember this isn't a dog. This is someone. We were watching a horror movie, and her mom comes, and there was like a really scary clip, and her mom comes walking in, and we all screamed and she just stares like what the heck but we were watching a horror movie so of course it was like not something we wanted you know of course it would freak us out okay uh this is a response one so let's read that i don't watch scary movies often while while my so is an enthusiast Enthusiast and veteran, every time I scream from being frightened, but I see my dog gallops to my rescue only to step on me, crush me, right in my face, and I'm sure uh, she means well. Oh, 100% she does. Um, I had this one friend, and her mom would, like, during a scary part, sneak her arm around like this and, like, just, like, kind of lightly tap her on the back to scare her once the jump scare happened just to freak her out more <laughs> definitely hilarious okay next story here my cat attempted a very long leap from the island to the kitchen counter and just fell short she clung for dear life hanging over the edge of the counter just looking up at the ceiling ceiling for a few seconds read red mufasa death scene Oh, Mufasa, then started to grab at things on the counter to hold on. She grabs her water bowl, tips it onto herself, and slides soaking wet onto the floor. Oh. Oh, my dear life, hanging over the edge. That's so funny. Um, my, like, dog, cats are so agile. Like, it doesn't matter what happens to them. They're going to survive, really. Um, my boyfriend's cat, they, they, so they have a second story in their house a good height to a flight of stairs, and um, they have a cat, like, who doesn't have eyes, so they, so she fell from the top of the stairs and still somehow survived. My cousin's dog was taken to the emergency vet with serious stomach problems. They first thought it could be a life-threatening twisted intestinal stomach problem, until the dog proceeded to get up and walk over the corner and poo out a pair of my cousin's knickers. Okay, there you go. There's your answer. I know, like, we had one one dog come in when I worked at a clinic, and I can't say which clinic, just for privacy reasons, and this dog kept going in and out of con- cautiousness or whatever. They drove, like, three hours to get into town, I think, and literally... The, the dog was just high. They got she might have got into edibles or something like that, which is crazy to me. Okay, guys, last we'll do. Sorry, no, we're gonna do two more and then we'll call it a day because I gotta get going. Um, yeah. Okay. I tend to be a night owl and stay up way later than my roommates, and I'm the only one in my room besides my two snakes. I watched Silence of the Lambs with a friend and sent him off and turned out all my lights and went to bed in the dark. I've seen the movie a few times and I love it, but it still gives me the willy. So I'm in bed in the dark, alone in my room, and I hear a cough. I laid in my bed wondering wondering what the hell the noise was and if it could be a roommate stirring or if there were a serial killer in my room. And oh my god, I was going to die. And I'm too young to die. I had just about written off as my imagination going nuts with the normal household noises. And then I heard the cough again, and that was when I sat up and threw my light on, and it definitely wasn't a serial killer, or my house settling, or my roommate. No, it was my fast-ass ball python trying to fit into her hide, into her hide that could no longer accommodate wide loads, girth, so the coughing was her scooting it around, trying to fit it all of, fit all of herself in it. That, yeah, definitely. I don't know... 
that is adorable that she was looking for, for her little comfort spot. Maybe you gotta go get her a new one now. If she's a little too um, big for this one. I've never had a snake. I've had a friend who's had a snake before. They're 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 kind of cool actually. They're cute as long as you get the the the, the ones that you can have as pets, which I believe he says here. They're he has pythons, I think. That's, yeah, python. Yeah, okay. Well, I had a friend who had a python, and they're pretty cool um snakes actually. They're adorable, but yeah, they're they can be creepy to lots of people too. Okay, and then on to the last one. This goes back about 35 years, but I think it will always be my funniest pet story no matter what else happens. I have always been very into crafting, and my mom and I had gone to a craft store to stock up on supplies to get ready for the fall craft shows. I had bought three yards of red velvet ribbon in three different widths. A quarter, half, and one. I had all of my supplies in a box at the side of my bed while working on stuff one night. I got tired, piled everything back into the box, turned out my bed, my bed table lamp, and fell asleep. Oh, turned out my bed table lamp and fell asleep. The next morning at about 6 p.m. or 6, I woke up, sat, sat up, and looked around the room to focus on things and get the sleep out of my eyes. I saw a three-foot piece of of a of quarter red velvet ribbon lying on the floor and my heart stopped when I saw that one end of it had been chewed. I immediately looked for my two cats to make sure everyone was okay. Tiki was sleeping comfortably in a semi-upside down position on the floor next to the bed. Sitting on the corner of the bed in a meatloaf position looking very full was Augie. I immediately panicked because I knew he had done, what he had done. I went running down the hall to take my mom, wake my mom, who was semi-awake after having seen my dad off to work half an hour earlier. I stood in front of her and started crying and said, Mom, we have to get Augie to the vet. He ate six feet of, rib, of red velvet ribbon. She looked at me and said, Oh, that can't be. He probably chewed it in two and, to, and dragged a piece of it off somewhere. But I was adamant and swore he had swallowed it. My mom tried to calm me down by telling me that if he tried to swallow six feet of anything at one time, he would have choked before he could get it down. So it couldn't be inside the cat. He had to he had to have dragged it off somewhere while playing with it. I would not I would not be convinced. While we were arguing about it, Augie went honking down the hallway with his tail straight up in the air with, you guessed it, six inches of velvet ribbon sticking of his butt, I ordered Mom to get dressed. I grabbed Augie, wrapped up, wrapped him up in a towel, and we headed out the door to the vet. I figured it would be the best to be there when he opened his doors at 7.30. We only had 30 minutes to go at this point. Augie's vet was a little Indian man who had been our vet for many years. When he saw us, in the parking lot, as he was opening the door, his door, he knew something was very wrong because he knew, uh, we, because he knew we knew animals and didn't panic over little things. He came over the car and ushered us into the building. His eyes widened and he saw the red velvet ribbon sticking out from under Augie's tail. He put on a pair of gloves, picked up the end of the ribbon, ribbon gave a tentative little tug and finding no resistance, Slowly started to pull on the ribbon. Now back in the 70s, there was comedian, a, a comedian named Art Matrano. He would do a bogus magic act where he would do stupid things like hold up both hands with two fingers. Wait, what? Hold up both hands with two finger, fingers up, one on one hand and one and none on the other. Then he would bump his hands together and be holding up one finger on each hand. What? He bumped them together, and now the two fingers would be on the hand that had originally had no fingers upon it. You get the picture. The whole time he was he was da 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 da, da to the tune of the song called "Fine and Dandy." This is the music I would have used to score this debacle. Uh, to score this de debacle. The doctor gently tugged and tugged and tugged and his eyes got wider and wider and Augie's eyes got wider and wider and he periodically let out a wow sound. Finally, the doctor was standing there holding a six foot 
long piece of shit covered red velvet ribbon. Augie looked horrified. I looked horrified. The vet, being as short as he was, had to stand on the tiptoes to keep him keep the ribbon from dragging on the floor. Now he decides that he wants to show the people in the waiting room how he was start how he has started his day. He walks out into the waiting room on his tiptoes, carrying six feet of shit covered red velvet ribbon. Uh, you are not, you are not going to believe, uh, you're not going to be believing what I have just taken from this cat's hiney. The waiting room erupted into laughter. I wanted to die. Augie looked at him like, will you call me? Will you, will I see you again? And then I looked over at my poor mother to discover that she was wearing a red floral top and purple plaid shorts because that was all she could grab when I ordered her to get dressed. We're going to the vet earlier that morning. Since then, I have been very careful with any anything stringy around my cat. As much as as much fun as that morning was, I don't care to repeat this repeat it in this lifetime. I don't care for you for that either. Oh my gosh, I'm so glad that he got it out. Wow, that's crazy. So bizarre. But those are the stories of animal of your funny animals today. Um, this will be a funny. This will happen every Friday. I've decided to change it up, so we're not always looking at animal videos, but we're doing something a little different. So, so I'm super excited about this one. You guys have an awesome rest of your day. We'll chat soon. Bye now.